Baltimore regionals have come and gone, and with it, I gained some important information, and I want to talk about some of the things that you absolutely should not do at the next regionals, whether it's your 10th or your first. These are some really important pieces of advice, and uh, I, I think it's good to talk about once in a while. Hey, Nick from Nine Card TCG, and today we, are, of course, are talking about just, it, it's casual, right? We're just sitting here, we're just talking, and it, 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 if you are an experienced player, some of this advice or some of the things I'm going to say are going to be pretty obvious things that you might already know, but once in a while, it's still a good thing to hear, and if you have never been to a regionals or you're still really new to the regional scene, well, then you might find this information or things that I'm going to say a little bit helpful. And uh, but before we get into the actual stuff like the meat of the of the video like subscribe comment all that kind of stuff tells YouTube this is a good channel other people should watch it. I go live on Twitch a bunch of days you can find the schedule either on YouTube or on Twitter. So make sure you go check those out. And uh yeah, I guess we'll just kind of get right into it. The first one I feel like I shouldn't have to say this but Inevitably, every single event, there is always some type of cheating or perceived cheating or scandal or whatever you want to call it, right? There's some accusation or allegations, without a doubt, every single regional. Some of the things that, you know, some of it's really blatant, whether you're palming a boss's orders or you're hiding sleeves or you're stacking your deck or whatever you're doing, uh, though that's blatant cheating lying to your opponent or whatever I, that's all super obvious blatant cheating but there are some things that people do that they don't necessarily think is cheating if you and we'll use an example from baltimore and i don't know anyone's names and even if i did i wouldn't use them because it could have been an honest mistake i don't know i wasn't there i didn't get to see it i just know it happened if you're gonna double sleeve meaning you're gonna use an inner sleeve and an outer sleeve you have to double sleeve all your cards, right? You just, you have to. And I know some cards are more valuable or expensive than others. And that value might not be monetary. It might be sentimental value. Maybe it's your favorite card. Maybe it's your favorite Pokemon card. Maybe it's a reprint of Quick Ball or like an, a very old Quick Ball or promo card or whatever it is. You want to protect it. So you double sleeve it. But you have to double sleeve all your cards. And that's just one example uh, don't cheat because it's going to be very obvious that which card is double sleeved and which one is not and you'll get a game loss if not dq'd so you know just uh don't cheat and i feel like i feel like i shouldn't have to say this you know we have what's called the spirit of the game it's sportsmanship is really what it is you don't want someone cheating when they're playing you you shouldn't cheat when you're playing against other people. And if you feel like your opponent is being deceptive or dishonest or just cheating, call a judge. Let them handle it. You yourself don't have to, you, you know, you're not a vigilante. You don't have to take action. You know, just, just call a judge. Let them deal with it and move on from there. But absolutely, please do not cheat. The next thing, the next like, really big mistake that people don't make or that doesn't make sense. The next mistake that people make is not testing enough. And this is something that I was very, very guilty of for this event. I did not really care or did not like that the Baltimore Regionals was in the world's format. We only were able to use up to Pokemon Go, couldn't use Lost Origin, but I really want to use Lost Origin cards and when, I, when I'm streaming or I go to locals or whatever, most of my time was taken up by playing Lost Origin, and I wasn't really focused on the world's format. I wasn't, you know, wasn't able to, uh, I wasn't playing as many games or as many decks uh, in the world's format that I should have. So when it came time to actually play Baltimore Regionals, guess who was very underprepared? And I don't think I made a ton of mistakes. I just, in this case not being prepared for the world's format meant that my metagame decision was off. My deck selection was not the best one. 
uh, it was a fine deck. I just think I think it was a little bit too inconsistent, too easy to brick, and it did a lot. It did a lot of that, and we'll, I guess we'll talk about my actual run in just a few minutes. But you know, make sure that you're involved in the meta game and the format for the event you're gonna play. I know some of my other friends they focused on lost, uh, on the world's format and did better than I did, and it's not. You know, sometimes you hit bad matchups, sometimes your deck bricks, and that's that's very possible. It's a part of the game. Um, and then there's times where you're just a little bit distracted, is is how it is. And I, I personally was not, I was not in the Baltimore Regionals the way I should have been, and I just was so over it that I I didn't, I didn't really care. And it's not a good, it's not a, it's not a good mentality to have going into a regional you want to have that that spark that fire there are plenty of people who go just to hang out play some pokemon they don't care if they go 09 they don't care you know if they go 9 oh it doesn't matter they're not there they're to to win the event they're just there to enjoy pokemon with their friends and uh you know and the community and that's perfectly fine if that's you then whatever none of this really applies except for the not cheating part you play whatever deck you want. You play whatever makes you happy. You just do your thing. If, but if you're there to win, if you're there to be competitive, try to make day two, get points, get prizing, uh, w you know, whatever it is, you have to focus on the format that we're in and you can't really get too ahead of yourself like I did. So that's, I guess, advice number two or a piece of advice number two, item two. I don't really know how we're classifying this. The third mistake that people make is a metagame mistake and this is something that comes with experience this is something that comes with networking and meeting people whether you're getting coaching or you're present online finding out what people are playing what a good deck might be is I, the one i played was an arceus pikachu decidui deck but i added a 1-1 crobat just because i felt mew was popular and really good and i was right about that part i was right about me Mew being pretty popular and really good but in adding so many pieces to this deck uh I, I think it became a little bit inconsistent and if i had gone just arceus flying pikachu dark or just arceus flying pikachu uh, the decidueye either one would have been better but adding that like the dark on top of everything else was just too much you know you have your fighting lightning dark energy double tight there's so many different things happening uh and i just you know just kind of threw it in because it's like it's arceus and it's flying pikachu and that's a pretty good deck at the moment so we just throw in the dark package into anything and, and it's fine that's kind of what some decks have done in the past to deal with the mew match i'll just i'll just add dark types and there you go but it doesn't always work the Arceus Flying Pikachu deck, especially with something like Decidueye, Lucario, whatever, does have a little bit of tendency to brick. And just like Palkia, Palkia is going to brick fairly often for Palkia, uh, for something that's supposed to be as consistent. And when it bricks, it bricks pretty hard. Same thing with this deck, just to give you an idea of what the level of brick was like. Because not all of it's bricking, some of it's tough matchups, some of it's misplay, some of it's bricking right those are all they're not they're not mutually exclusive you don't lose i mean sometimes you do but you don't lose an event because you only bricked or because you only misplayed or you only they're all contributing factors anyway i was going second so my opponent played their pokemon they had their turn i started zigzagoon of course incidentally for the third or fourth time that day had started only Zigzagoon. So now it's my turn. No other Pokemon in my hand. No other outs to Pokemon. I do have a Marnie though. So play the Marnie. Still no outs to Pokemon. I have no choice but to just pass. I, I can't do anything. I played my supporter. I don't have any outs to Pokemon. I can attach an energy to Zigzagoon if I want to. But my opponent's going to knock out the, the, uh, the Zigzagoon and win the game. And that happened to me twice. In two separate rounds, I started uh, I started Zigzagoon, had no other Pokemon out, and just got donked. And it's a little uh, frustrating to, to not even get to play the game. I, there were definitely... I, I'm sure I made mistakes. I'm sure I didn't make 
the best play uh, every single time. But I felt like when I got to play, I played well. And the, the rounds that I were able to play with the deck had Arceus, had energy, had things that I could do. I won those rounds, like those individual games. I guess that kind of leads into, you know, the, uh, oh, this is this is like a, just a ramble at this point. Uh, it's not even advice. It's, it's more of just me prattling on. But make all, all of this to say, make sure the deck you pick is good and, and, and test it a lot in that format with decks that you think might be popular, decks that are really strong, things that you see are placing well online, things you hear people talking about. You should be testing a ton. And that, you know, it kind of ties into the first one. Once you tie, once you start the test, you go in there and you're able to make good meta calls or, you know, the deck you pick will be a better meta call. And, you know, it was funny because I had recommended a couple of times now Duraldon, uh, Arceus Duraldon as being like a good, uh, a good pick for this tournament and even for Worlds, honestly, being a pretty good pick. And Arceus Duraldon was good. It did well, and it's like, if only I had listened to my own advice of when I recommended it to people, or even made a video about top five decks for Baltimore, Arceus Dvaldon was on there. Ultimately, regardless of how you do, whether you start 5-0 and and then just lose and go 5-3 and miss out on day two, or, you know, more likely you go 4-0 and, and then you go 4-5 four, four, or 4-3 four, or whatever, you know, you end 5 three. Or you, you do what I do, you start 1-0 hit some really tough matchups, get some really bad draws, and next thing you know, you're one in three, and you're like, well, this isn't fun. This is, you know, I think that is the most difficult part of it, is shaking off the loss, shaking off a bad tournament run. It happens to everybody. I did poorly. I'm not, listen, I am by no means a phenomenal player. I'm, I know where my skill level is. But other individuals, you look at NAIC, someone like Raul, who is who is a really good player, went 0-3 drop. It happens. You have other individuals, Gabe Smart, another phenomenal player, missed out on day two for this event. You know, it's... You're never going to win every single event. You're never going to make top, two for, top uh, day two for every single event. It's... You know, it just... It happens. There's, there's nothing you can do about it. Luck is not always on your side. Uh, sometimes you're, who you get paired up with, what they pick, what they draw, what you draw, that's a lot of times, all, almost all of the time, out of your control. And so, you know, there's very little in the Pokemon TCG or in training card games in general of things you can control. And so, you know, that, that does make it a little challenging, but you just have to fight it off and be ready Learn from the mistakes that you or other people, miss, you know, their mistakes that they make. This way you don't make them the next time. I know when I go to uh, the next regionals, which is in, the next time I get to go is in March. I will have tested a ton for that regional because I want to do well. It's going to be in a, in, in a new, interesting format. I'm going to be excited for it and I'm going to be playing a ton of games. I'm going to be getting coaching. I'm going to be picking a deck that I, I really feel comfortable and confident with. Did not really feel super confident with the deck that I had uh, for Baltimore. It's just, I felt okay with it. I hadn't gotten a fair amount of practice with Arceus Pikachu, but I just didn't feel comfortable with the 1-1 one Decidueye, 1-1 one Crobat. Just it felt a lot, but I felt like I needed to do it, and it just wasn't good. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. I know this was a long ramble, a long rant, whatever you want to call it. It's just kind of, like I said, prattling on before, but... I think it's important to be able to hear that it's okay to have a bad run. It's okay to, that you've hit some bad luck. It's okay to make misplays. Just shake it off, learn from it, do better the next time. And even if even the next, the very next tournament, you still might not do a lot better uh, because again, so many of those things are out of your control. And you need time to grow and develop these skills. But if you stick with it, if you continue to practice and grow, you will start to see improvements. And it's just, that's just how it has to be, right? That's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Found this a little informative. If you did, subscribe, like, comment, share this video with others so they can, you know, some, you don't know who, 
who needs to hear this? Who who had really high hopes or expectations for their tournament run and didn't it didn't pan out, and now they're a little upset. Uh, you know, sometimes you just need to hear a little bit of encouragement that other people didn't do well. It's okay. You just you know you just gotta shake it off, bounce back, and and come back better and stronger than ever. But you know. There we go. That's going to do it. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.